Hey there, welcome back to Northlight Photographic Workshops. Uh, I'm up here on the uh, shores of Lake Superior in Canada. Um, I've come up here to Lake Superior Provincial Park for a couple of days to do a little bit of photography. And uh, boy, it's beautiful. I haven't been here in a long time, probably not since I was a child. And uh, there's some amazing, um, some amazing stuff here. Um, I'm right here on the uh, shore, um, and uh, the rock shores are amazing. Um, it's kind of crazy to think that this is only three hours away from my home. It's like a completely different country up here. So uh, anyway, I'm going to wander around here, and uh, this seems to be kind of a perfect spot for me to photograph. This is kind of my kind of place, and. Uh, I haven't done anything this around, like this around home in so long. You know, I was just back up in Iceland. Uh, I've only been home a couple of weeks right now, and uh, it's really nice to be able to come back and then come to something like this pretty much right away. Um, yeah, it's just nice to kind of continue to work with different landscapes, and uh, I'm really, really enjoying this right now. So yeah, I came up here um, yesterday. Came up with my little dog Atticus, and. Uh, He's back sitting in his uh, crate right now, probably wondering what I'm doing, but he's pretty tuckered out after the morning I gave him running around. And uh, I just thought I'd take some time to myself to come out here and photograph. So this rumble of noise that you can hear, unfortunately, is uh, the Trans-Canada Highway, which is over there a few hundred yards, so there's some big trucks rumbling by. So if you hear any noise in the microphone, it's that, other than the wind around here. But uh, I'm going to get to it. Um, one of the things that I always talk about in my photography, and especially when I'm working on a um, on a landscape uh, like this, is that I, I like to um, I like to work it like a problem. You know, I mean, I, I kind of approach it in different ways. Very often, I'll get to a spot like this, and I'll see a shot that I immediately want to do, right? And uh, and then I'll spend a lot of time working on that shot, and then I will eventually kind of get that through my system and then I can start working on some things, um, some other things, some more details. So, uh, you know, one of the rules is whenever you're photographing, uh, you know, something really intensely, um, don't forget to turn around and look to see what's behind you. So uh, that's what I'm going to do here. We're going to, um, I got the tripod already set up behind me here and uh, I'm going to get to some work. I've got a, a, an image composed that, that uh, that I, uh, it's kind of an obvious one. It's sort of the first one that I was going to go for. So um, I'm going to try that first and uh, I'm going to let you stick by me when I'm doing it. And um, I wish that I could answer any questions, but maybe by watching me work, you'll get some sort of an idea of, of how I do it. Not to say that the way that I do it is right, but at least to give you an idea of it. Um, today is a really nice shimmery day. There's a really nice shimmer on the water. And uh, very often what I'll do um, is I'll add uh, an ND filter to things just to slow it down a little bit. But I'm going to try some things without that as well because this, this shimmering on the water is just amazing. I wish you could see it behind, me, behind the camera right now. Um, and I'm sure that I can't capture it on the video the way that I'm seeing it with my eye. But that might be something that I'll work on. Um, also, when I was walking in here, I saw these puddles with... Uh, pine needles floating on them, these brown pine needles in the, in the puddles, and the puddles were very still at that time. And since I've gone back and gotten my camera to set up for this, uh, the breeze has picked up a little bit, so um, I might not get that shot, but I'm going to be working on that before, before we leave also. So yeah, let's get to it. Um, it's beautiful here. I'm um, having such a great day. I know that there's a big storm working to our south right now, but I just can't see anything on the horizon here. There's this big, beautiful, puffy clouds and a lot of reflections on the rocks on the shoreline. So uh, let's have some fun with this, all right? Let's go. So the sun has come out pretty bright while I was getting this set up. And it's gonna kind of change the feel of what I originally saw. But there are clouds moving by right now that will be covering up the sun a bit. So uh, I'm just going to work on it the way that I originally planned. And uh, what I've got here set up is a, I've got an ND10 filter on here and I'm shooting an exposure of what, let's see here, 20 seconds at uh, 
um, F22. So now, um, for those of you that know, I normally shoot uh, in with a 400 ISO, but I really wanted to slow things down today. So I've gone back to an ISO of 64, and that gives me those extra stops to be able to work on um, everything in between with. So I'm just going to get going on it here right now. The light's changing really fast, and that's one of the things that it's very hard for me to uh, decide on the best light. So I tend to kind of shoot everything. I mean, that's another thing about working the problem is that I just have to kind of keep working on it until I feel like I've got something here that I'm really digging on. So this is all framed up. Got it focused, I'm putting the ND back on. And I'm gonna go for the exposure. Now my exposure again is 20 seconds. So we'll see what happens. It's the beauty of having the, uh, the LCD readout is I don't have to Polaroid these anymore. Ooh, oh yeah, wow. I'm a little bit overexposed on things right now, but because I'm shooting in raw, it's a really good way to go. As long as I'm not clipping anything out, um, I mean, it, when I'm saying overexposure, it looks that way to me. It just kind of blown out. But I can look on the histogram and I can see that I'm not clipping anything out. So I know that in my raw image that I'll be able to pull things back. So um, on a day like today, I'll tend to go for a little brighter image and uh, pull in the highlights rather than go for a darker image and have to pull down the shadows or pull up the shadows. So, but even so, I'm going to close down a little bit more here. Well, actually, I can't close down. I'm just going to shorten my exposure a little bit. I'm going to go down to 15 seconds. Now, some other time, I think I'll do a video perhaps on just my composition and the way that I like to compose. A lot of people ask me that question and Oh yeah, I like that better. All right. Well, you can see what I just did here. It's, it's pretty nice. Um, but anyway, uh, with my exposure, or I'm sorry, with my, my um, composing of my image, um, I very much tend to balance things out. Like when I was taught in in design class about, you know, we used to take a bunch of sticks and ink them up and then place them on a piece of paper, on a piece of white paper and place that stick in some place where that line would feel balanced to us. And then we would do another one and that kind of thing. And basically when I'm looking at an image, I'm kind of looking at it that way. You know, I'm, I'm sectioning it off into different areas and um, basically to give me a, a sense of balance. And that's, you know, people in general like that sense of balance in their vision. You know, I mean, you don't want everything on one side of the image because it just feels like it's going to go this way. You don't want everything in the top. You don't want everything in the bottom. You know, I mean, it's just, it just makes sense to kind of balance your composure, your, your, um, your uh, composure like that um, so that you, you feel balanced out. Now, it just depends on what I'm looking at. You know, it doesn't, if it's a person sitting in front of me, if it's a dog, if it's, anything but right now I have all this gorgeous nature in front of me and I have reflections and rocks and lines in the rocks and all kinds of things that I can compose with and basically that's what I'm doing when I'm composing my image. I mean for me there's definitely a right way and a wrong way to shoot an image and uh, right now I hope I'm shooting it in the right way. Now like I say before, once I get that out of my system, then it's time to kind of work on the problem further and see if there's more that I can do without just taking the obvious, which I've just done basically. So, cool. Well, with that, I'm gonna turn it off to save some battery. I'm going to uh, kind of move a little closer into this system, this, um, I'm sorry, into this image here. And uh, 
you know, I'll show you a little bit of what I'm talking about here, but there's some really cool rock patterns in front of me that I'm trying to use to compose this image. And uh, probably what I'm going to do is get down a little closer into this scene and um, maybe cut out some of the background uh, and, and just go for that and see what we can do then. So, as you can see, this is this little area that I was talking about that I want to try to use in the foreground of my, um, my, uh, my composing of my image. Um, and that will be part of the problem is once I get the camera down to this level then I start working it in, I'm just going to have to balance things out in the viewfinder a way that makes me feel, makes me feel balanced. So, um, let's see. Um, what I'm going to do basically there's some really beautiful things going on underneath the water as well. So I'm going to place the camera at an angle where I can pick that up as well. So here we go. Now well, the way I'll do this most often is I will take the camera off even though I'm going to need the camera. I'm going to, I'm going to need the camera on a tripod when I make the final image. I'm going to uh, handhold the camera until I kind of get my composure uh, my composition sort of where I want it to be, so. And again, I, I kind of, I want to shoot out toward the water into this nice big puddle that's here. Um, but I want to be careful with this point source of light in the, uh, with the sun reflecting. So I'm going to try to keep that, the sun out of the water, if you know what I mean. Oh yeah, good grief, this is beautiful. So, all right. I'm thinking that this is where I want to be. Um, making my exposure from. So what I'm going to have to do is set the camera down. I'm going to readjust my tripod and uh, I'll get down to this. Okay, so. This is about where I was. Get the camera mounted again. Yeah, this is it. I'm catching just a little bit of an island that's out there in the distance, which is kind of repeating this other little rock that's showing up in the water here in the puddle that kind of looks like another island. And again, I'm focusing hard on the foreground and this pattern in the rocks. And always I'm careful to keep my horizons level. Nothing worse than a crooked horizon, in my opinion. Okay, so I've got it set up there. I'm going back with the neutral density filter. And I'm going to make my exposure. Now again, I'm going with a really long exposure because there is a little bit of water blowing here and I want to keep the reflection looking pretty pretty crisp but also at the same time with a nice soft feel to it. You'll see what I mean here in a minute. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna open it up a little bit. Do the same thing. Okay, now while I'm making this exposure, I'm looking off to the left here and I'm seeing another thing that I want to shoot. And it's just this kind of line of water um, in the rock. Like I said before, you know, you start working the problem and then you just kind of dive into a scene and into a location like this and you never know what you're really going to come up with in the end, even though you came into it with the idea of something completely different. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's very cool. I really like this piece of uh, rock in the front here. In fact, I think what I'm going to do as an aside is just another image more focused down on that. Yeah, get even more foreground in there. Yeah, good, okay. Let me open that up a little bit more. And I'm doing that now by going to a full 30 seconds rather than opening the lens up because I want to keep the lens pretty, pretty sharply focused on this foreground as well as to have, um, you know, the background in focus as well. Wow. Got to say again, it's wonderful to have this kind of uh, shoreline to work with here. It's like almost like the coast of Maine. Huh, that's beautiful. And when I was here, I have to say, as with a child's eye, I wasn't looking at it like I am right now. And this is just spectacular. I could spend a lot of time here. Once again, working the problem in a little further. A little less background, a little more foreground. Because also the way the light is hitting it here, it's kind of haloing it for me and giving it sort of a vignette, at least the way that I'm exposing it. Oh yeah, okay. See, now I just kind of want to cut the background all out altogether and just focus right in on that. So that's what I'm going to do. And there's still going to be a little bit of... water and reflections in there, but it's going to be more about the rock formation and some of these Really nice little uh, sprigs off the pine trees. Okay. So, like I say, you never get too locked in on the original image that you're working on because it becomes so much more than that. And this, for me, might end up being the image of the day. You never know. Although, you know, like I say, you sit here and you start looking around while you're working on another image. That's another thing about working with slower, slower shutter speeds is that it gives you some time to really look around you and uh, you start seeing a lot of things. going with another just for safe measure it's good to come up around this time of year too because um you know there's still some people traveling but uh there's a lot less people around and um not that i don't like people or the idea that people have to go places like this um it's just not as fun when you're working like this i can't really sit down and and work uh you know with a lot of different things going on so it's a nice time to come. <laughs> Spectacular. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to move on to this other shot that I see here, which is the, uh, the, the needles on the edge of the water and the, kind of the, the, the curving of the water line as it goes down the rocks. So I'm just going to move over here a little bit. Stick with me. Yeah, 
see this is this is what makes it never ending is you just keep finding new things to work with I don't think I'm going to spend a lot of time on this one because I kind of have a feeling that that last image that I got there might have been the one. But uh, I don't want to quit too soon. Now actually while I was over there setting up the camera where you're viewing me from right now, I saw a few other things over there that looked interesting. So. I'm not saying I'm done yet. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. All right, let's open up a little bit more on that one. And if nothing else, I'm definitely going to go back to that puddle there where all of the uh, needles were in there and see if I can still make some sort of a cool image in there. Wow, this is quite a place. I'm going to have to come back here repeatedly. I mean, right now I'm actually two hours, two and a half hours from my home. Oh, yeah. Very happy. Okay. I'm going to move on over to that area that I was talking about. And then, after that, I might call it quits. So, stick with me. Oh, my God. The patterns in the rock here are amazing. And I think I'm going to have to do something here. As far as composition goes, this is a great thing to try out here too, because you can see where this ridge is here. It creates kind of a dark line. And then in the horizon out here, there's a point of land that comes out that's kind of a repeat of that. And that's another thing in composition that can be really good is just different repeating shapes. So, I'm going to set this up here and see what I can do. Balance out the tripod. But I want to keep low because I want to compress uh, the, the little harbor here. I don't want it to be real wide in the image. I want to bring the distance a little closer down in. So me getting down lower helps a lot with that. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah. And then there's these lines in the rocks that kind of draw your eye in to the image. And that's another good thing in a composition is to keep people's eye, keep the viewer's eye inside the image. You know, don't have things going off the page or off the, uh, the frame unless you're using it in some very creative way that works. It can also be very distracting for the viewer. So uh, these lines moving into the image are all going to work to uh, make this a nice tight composition. <laughs> it's pretty nice. All right, so once again, I'm going to use the ND filter just to keep the water a little flatter. My exposure, I'm still I'm going to go for 30 seconds right now at uh, f16 because some sunlight just came out as well and it's lighting these rocks a little bit better in the foreground. 
pull my foot out just in case it's in there. I'm working here in square format, as you can tell. And uh, what I did is I just pulled out that much further, even though it wasn't that much. I just want to give it a little bit more space. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, I think what I'm going to do now is uh, move on over to the image that I was talking about uh, with the pine needles and see if that's still a viable image and then uh, head back to the car. Maybe at that point uh, get Atticus out, let him run around the rocks a little bit. Alright, let's go. So, here's the pool that I was talking about. There's a lot of them around here, but it's just the way the light's hitting it right now in here. And uh, they're moving ever so slowly. So that I think if I do a longer time exposure on this, it's going to give me an idea of the pattern of the current in there and the, the wind. And that's another thing I like about in my compositions is I like that feeling of time passing. So. I'm watching this and I'm seeing some spiral movement right here. So I'm gonna set the tripod up a little higher here and then just do an exposure from a little higher up. Not quite where I am right now. So, let's see what we're going to get here on a 30 second exposure. Oh yeah, you can definitely see that spiral motion that I was talking about. Let's try a little bit further down. We'll try this with the wind blowing a little bit more. in and now they're going back out again all within my exposure so this could be very interesting. Eh, a little bit mushy. Sometimes it's a little too much. But um, I think I've got a nice image there and quite frankly I'm starting to get a little bit burned out. That's also a thing that you don't want to do when you're working. So if you start to get kind of burned out on a scene, it's time to quit uh, because if you start trying to force things out of it, it can become, you know, useful. I'm not useful at all. So anyway, I think it's time to go back and check on Atticus, take him for a run on the rocks. And uh, I thank you a lot for coming with me on this one. Um, I may do a little bit more up here 
uh, in the next couple of days, but uh, I might leave it at this for now and just enjoy it myself. Um, but anyway, uh, I'll get back to you in a little while. I know I haven't been putting a lot out a lot lately. Um, there's just been a lot going on, Iceland and, uh, uh, and other things. I'll talk to you about that more in another video. Um, I've also got a Faroe Islands trip coming up, but it's almost full, so uh, that's in the spring. But I have other things coming up as well, so stick to, uh, stay, uh, stay tuned and I'll, I'll get to some uh, more announcements pretty soon, all right? So again, thanks very much. If you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. Uh, we're going to continue to have a lot more fun, so let's get to it. All right, take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.